In preparation for our first attempt at power-off stalls, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss the key elements of the maneuver. As with all other maneuvers, power-off stalls have three main areas that the pilot needs to concentrate on. Heading control, altitude control, and airspeed control. Power-off stalls can be done either straight ahead or while turning. If performing the stall straight ahead, you will be expected to maintain your heading plus or minus 10 degrees. If you are asked to induce the stall while turning, you will be expected to maintain the designated bank angle plus or minus 10 degrees. If the stall is performed straight ahead, once the power is reduced to idle and the pitch is being increased, it is important to keep the wings level and the plane coordinated. You can use a visual reference for your heading, but you will also have to rely on the heading indicator for part of the maneuver since your pitch just prior to the stall will be too high to see the horizon directly in front of you. Use your wingtips and attitude indicator to help keep the wings level and the slip skid indicator to tell if you're using the right amount of rudder. Unlike in the recovery, minimal rudder will be required since P-factor, slipstream, and torque will not be much of a factor with the power at idle. It is important that you maintain wings level coordinated flight as the plane stalls. If the wings are level and the proper rudder pressure is being applied, the plane should stall straight ahead. Remember, as you increase power and raise the nose during the recovery, the plane will have a tendency to yaw to the left. Compensate for this with the use of additional right rudder. If you are performing a turning stall, you won't need to worry about your heading control. Instead, focus on maintaining a constant bank prior to the stall. As the pitch is increased from the 65-knot descent, begin a coordinated turn in either direction. Select a bank angle somewhere between 10 and 20 degrees and maintain that bank as you continue to increase back pressure on the yoke. More right rudder for turns to the right will be necessary, but be careful not to apply too much rudder since this can cause the plane to overbank. After the stall has occurred, lower the nose and level the wings and use the same recovery procedure as you did for straight ahead stalls. Altitude requirements for performing stalls are very simple. The first thing you need to do is to select an altitude that will allow you to recover no lower than 1500 feet AGL. This is the minimum altitude that you are allowed to descend to during the maneuver. Keep in mind that you will need to establish a stabilized descent of no more than 200 feet during the maneuver. On top of that, the amount of altitude lost during a stall is unpredictable due to a number of variables, so it is a good idea to give yourself plenty of buffer between your entry altitude and the minimum recovery altitude. A safe bet is to begin the maneuver no lower than 2,500 feet AGL. Once you have selected an appropriate entry altitude for the maneuver, you will be expected to maintain that altitude as you slow the plane down and add flaps. As always, when adding flaps, forward pressure on the yoke is required to prevent the plane from climbing. As stated earlier, the amount of altitude that will be lost during the stall and recovery cannot be predetermined. Your objective is to recognize and recover from the stall with as little loss in altitude as possible and return to any pre-assigned altitude designated prior to the stall. This can be accomplished by following the recovery procedures outlined in this PACE video and the Cessna SOPM. Airspeed control during power-off stalls begins with slowing the plane down as it is configured for the stall. Make certain each time you lower the flaps that the airspeed is below the appropriate flap extension speed. After the flaps have been added and the plane slows to 70 knots, a stabilized 65-knot descent is established to simulate an approach to landing. Once the pitch is increased to induce the stall, airspeed is no longer a concern until after stall recovery. Once the recovery has been initiated, a VY pitch attitude will be established. As the airspeed passes through 60 knots, the flaps will be retracted to 10 degrees, and when passing through 65 knots, the final flaps will be retracted. Once you have returned to the designated altitude, the airplane should be allowed to accelerate to normal cruise. Throughout all of the changes in airspeed, trim should be used to alleviate control pressures. To perform a power-off stall, select an altitude that will allow for recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL. Select a prominent visual reference to fly towards and note your heading. Reduce the power to 1500 RPM and maintain heading and altitude. Below 110 knots, call out. Below 110, flaps 10. 
and extend the flaps to 10 degrees. Be sure to apply forward pressure on the yoke at the same time as the flaps are extended. Once the plane is slowed to 85 knots, call out Below 85, flaps 30. Once again, forward pressure on the yoke will be needed to maintain altitude. Remember to use the trim to relieve control pressure as the airplane decelerates. Once the airplane has reached 70 knots, lower the pitch and establish a 65 knot stabilized descent. Trim to maintain airspeed. Descending no lower than 200 feet from the entry altitude, simultaneously reduce power to idle and smoothly pitch up to the VY pitch attitude, approximately 9 to 10 degrees. If you are performing a straight ahead stall, pitch up towards your visual reference until you can no longer see it. Then, use your heading indicator to verify you are holding your heading. Referencing the attitude indicator and keeping your wingtips equidistant from the horizon will help you maintain wings level. As the plane slows, apply more and more back pressure on the yoke to maintain the VY pitch attitude. The stall horn will sound approximately 5 knots above the stall speed. Some buffeting will be felt as the airflow begins to separate from the top of the wing. Continue to hold the VY pitch attitude until the nose drops or you experience a sudden loss of control effectiveness. Once the stall has occurred, call out stall it and allow the yoke to move forward on its own. There is no need to push the yoke forward. Simply let the nose drop to break the stall. Pushing forward on the yoke will only result in a greater loss in altitude and a much more unpleasant falling sensation. Once control effectiveness has been regained, apply full power and use the ailerons and rudder to maintain wings level coordinated flight. Smoothly bring the nose up to the VY pitch attitude and retract the flaps to 20 degrees. It is important that the nose not be raised too quickly or the angle of attack on the airplane will increase rapidly and could result in a secondary stall, which is often more dramatic than the initial stall. Reaching 60 knots, retract the flaps to 10 degrees and at or above 65 knots, retract the flaps to 0 degrees. Finish off the maneuver by returning to the altitude, heading, and airspeed specified prior to commencing the maneuver. Once the airplane has accelerated to normal cruise speed, set cruise power, retrim the airplane, and complete the cruise checklist. The procedures for performing a turning stall remain the same up until the point the nose is raised to induce the stall. At that point, smoothly reduce power to idle, pull back on the yoke, and simultaneously roll into a 10 to 20 degree bank turn. Use the attitude indicator and the slip skid indicator to maintain a constant bank and proper coordination. Once the VY pitch attitude is reached, maintain that pitch and continue turning until the stall occurs. From here, the recovery procedure is the same. Reduce the angle of attack to regain control effectiveness and add full power. Maintain coordination and level the wings. Smoothly bring the nose up to the VY pitch attitude and retract the flaps to 20 degrees. Reaching 60 knots, retract the flaps to 10 degrees. And at or above 65 knots, retract the flaps to 0 degrees. Finish off the maneuver by returning to the altitude, heading, and airspeed specified prior to commencing the maneuver. Once the airplane is accelerated to normal cruise speed, set cruise power, retrim the airplane, and complete the cruise checklist. Now that we've covered how to fly the maneuver, let's look at the end goals for your skills in a power off stall. Some of the standards for the end of course check ride include. Begin the maneuver at an altitude that allows the stall to be completed no lower than 1500 feet AGL. Set up the airplane in a descent in the approach and landing configuration. Maintain your entry heading plus or minus 10 degrees if performing the stall in straight flight. If performing the stall in turning flight, maintain a bank angle not to exceed 20 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees. Recognize that the stall has occurred and recover promptly once it has. Retract the flaps to the recommended settings. Accelerate the airplane above VX before the final flap retraction. Return to the altitude, heading, and airspeed specified by the examiner.